the book of Luke. That's where we're going to spend some time this morning. <clears throat> what a perfect song that was fitting for today's message. Mary, did you know? But I want to share with you guys that there's these two young boys. They were spending the night um, probably a week before Christmas with their, their grandparents. And so that evening fell and, and, and grandma said, it's time to go to bed and, and rush them to the room they had to go into to sleep. And they went to the foot of the bed and they knelt down to pray. And the one little boy, he began to pray and he said, God, and he said it real loud, God, you know I want a new bicycle. And God, you know I want a new football. And he said, God, and you know I want that PlayStation 4 that I've been dreaming of for a long time. You know all these things. And his brother hit him and he said, why are you shouting and yelling? God is not death. And the little boy replied, I know, but grandma is. <laughs> so... So as I begin to think of my message, and, and that song was perfect for today, Mary, Did You Know? I begin to think of a great title for this message, The Christmas Birth Announcement. I begin to think of what, did, what, what took place and what was needing to happen for this birth announcement from heaven to take place. And I, as I begin to study and I begin to look, I, I begin to, to drift into the Gospels. Of, and I know many times I was thinking as I was preparing this, I said, you know what, they've heard over and over again about the birth and stuff. How can I make this different? How can I personally get something out of this message for myself? And I told my wife lately, as, I, as I've been indulging more into the Word of God and prepping and, and, and praying about things, I've been becoming more and more an emotional person when it comes to the Word of God. It's like, like I'm seeing it in a different view. I'm seeing it in a different light. And, and if you have your Bibles open to the book of Luke, we're going to be beginning um, in chapter 1. And we're going to start at verse 26. And in the sixth month of the angel Gabriel went, was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth and to a virgin exposed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of the day. Uh, of the house of David, and the virgin name was Mary. And the angel came um, in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when he saw him, she was troubled in saying, and cast in her mind the manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for I have... For thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the, uh, the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said uh, unto the angel, How shall this be, saying, I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy things which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy art. Uh, right there. So as I begin to prepare this message, I begin to think of Mary herself. You know, and I, and I begin to think a lot of times of um, people place an importance on, on, on Mary. And, and she does have an important part here. You know, as we, as we read in Scripture, the, the angel Gabriel comes to Mary with, with a, a, a message from God himself. You know, and I, and I thought about if, if, uh, if we were in place of Mary, how fearful we would be. And, and we probably would tremble at the sight of, of, this, of angels in, in, our, in our room or wherever she may have been at this time and, and wondering what is going on, what is happening. And, and, and if you understand the context of this, you understand from the, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the, uh, the, the Jewish people have not heard God for over 400 years you know, and, and I begin to think like, man, like, I wonder if, if the Jewish people begin to, to have a, a doubt or, a, 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 or looked at God and said, God, are you even there? Have you abandoned us? Are, are you still with us, God? Maybe after the first 50 years or the first 100 years, that, that, that doubt became in their mind of saying, I think God has left us. He has, he has, he has abandoned us because we have not heard from him in, in quite some time. And I can imagine Mary at this point, she's, and when you think of Mary, she's, she's a teenage girl. 
She's very young. And here an angel stands before her and he's telling her, Fear not, Mary, I have a message for you. And it's something wonderful. It's something that's going to be great. But fear not, because I have something that I need to explain to you so that you understand. As I begin to think about it, of, of the, the, the separation that was going on, and they haven't heard from God, I begin to think in our own lives how, how many times, even myself, I have felt like God has abandoned me. When I needed God the most, I, I would cry out and say, God, where are you? Why aren't you hearing my prayers? Why are you not answering the call that I've, I've called you to? Sometimes my prayer was a selfish prayer. Sometimes it was sin in my life that was can, can, uh, causing a barrier, and that was what took place when that whole time that they, they had not heard from God. But God was still with them. God was still there, and he was present with them. And I think sometimes we forget that because even God has given us a, a promise. And in Hebrews thirteen five, he says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. But sometimes we feel like God has left us and forsaked us. I can't imagine at this time when, the, when, when Mary's there and the angel comes to her and he, and he begins to share with her these great things that are going to happen. What she must have been going through or what she must have been thinking. As I shared with you guys before, the, the Christmas is, is the, my favorite time of the year. I rejoice at this time because it's not about the presents. It's more about the, the music of, of, of worshiping the Messiah who came as a Savior. Amen. But I also enjoy the decorations and I enjoy the Christmas lights and I enjoy taking my kids out and seeing those and, and, and rejoicing in those as we, as we go from house to house and we see these things. But I remember being a young child and you know what? One thing that only meant to me at Christmas time was I was going to be out of school and the presents that were under the tree. I remember as a kid picking up the gifts and shaking them, trying to figure out what it was. What, did, what was in that gift? Was it something I wanted, or was it something I was going to be very disappointed in, where I was going to have to, like, he, yeah, thanks, Mom, thanks, Dad, that type of thing. <clears throat> but as I got older, and I, and I began to build a better relationship with Jesus Christ, the, 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 the concept of Christmas became clearer to me that it wasn't about the presence under the tree, but about his presence in my life. Amen. That I begin to rejoice in, the, in understanding that it was about a God's love that sent his son to, to, to earth to live and to die for my, my penalty, the cross that I should have bared. He was willing to take the, the Jesus who knew no sin died on that cross in my place. And I begin to rejoice in that and realizing that Christmas time shouldn't just be the only time I should rejoice in that, but it should be a year-round presence, praising, worshiping the wonderful counsel of the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And I begin to grasp that. And as I begin to study this message, and I realize there's so much that, that God needs to teach me that, I, that I've missed I missed quite a bit on the birth announcement of Jesus Christ because I was looking at it in the wrong perspective. God came to Mary with this exciting message and he, t and he tells her that you're going to be with child and you're going to call him name, his name Jesus. And we see that in Matthew chapter 20, um, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 21. It says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sin. I can, I, I'm picturing Gabriel comes to Mary and he says, I have a promise from God that you are going to be the mother of the Messiah, the promised Messiah, because it's been told to the prophets in the Old Testament by God in Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give up a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And it became, the, the, the evidence was there that it, that it became true that God was back and he was sharing with them through the, through the angel Gabriel to Mary that she would bring forth a child. Matthew uh, uh, chapter 1 verse 23 says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which interprets as God with us. I can't imagine Mary taking on this this this. this 
news that she was going to bear the Son of God, but also know that she would have a long road and a long journey to bear of those who would sit there and gossip or talk about her, that she was unfaithful to Joseph, who would not understand nor grasp that the child that was in with her was the Son of God who came as a Savior for them. She was willing to bear that for them. But Gabriel also had a great message, and I think even God affirms it in his word, that, that the Son of God wasn't just God only, but he was 100% human and he was 100% God. And if we look at verse uh, uh, 32 of chapter 1 of, verse, of the book of Luke, Gabriel's talking, he says, He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he also talks about the deity of, of him being the Son of God. And we see that in verse 35. It says, The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. And therefore also that the holy things which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Jesus came, and he was 100% human, and he was 100% God. And he came because of a, a, a birth announcement that was presented that day to Mary. I can't imagine the, the, the excitement that was there. But I know the excitement that I have today as I look at, at through God's word and I realize the, the joy that would have came when Mary found out that. Willing to, to surrender her body, her life, her soul, her spirit to the Lord. Many times we get wrapped up in, in many things and we have a hard time surrendering ourselves to God. We have a hard time saying, God, I surrender all to you. We sing about surrendering our all to God. But we fail to give it all to God. Because we allow the fear in our lives to, to creep into us. Can you imagine if Mary at this point would have said, ran out the door in fear and, and, and hid or, or, or tried to, to deny that this was ever going to be true or any of it? I thought about that, that Christmas movie with um, It's a Wonderful Life or, or uh, Bailey, go, George Bailey goes and he says, I, I wish I was never born. I started thinking, I was like, man, when if, if Jesus was never born, what would my life be like? Where would I be today if the Savior did not come from heaven? What would my life be like? As we talked earlier, we talked about uh, Mary surrendering. She surrendered herself by faith to God. She became a willing servant for God. In verse uh, 45 of chapter 1, we see where she says, um, And blessed is she that believeth. She believed by faith that the angel Gabriel came with a great message for her. She received it. But she just didn't stop there when she received it. She responded to it. In verse 38 of Luke, it says, And Mary said, uh, Behold, the, hand, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. At this point, a handmaid was a, 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 the lowest female servant. And she was surrendering herself as a, a low uh, female servant unto the Lord. Surrendering her body. If you turn over with me to, to Romans chapter 12, in verse 1, and, I, and many of us, we probably know it and we probably memorized it, and it's uh, one that we, we kind of strive and we, we desire to live for. And Paul tells us, I beseech thee, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Mary grasped that. She got that. She surrendered herself as a handsmaid unto the Lord. But she just didn't surrender just the body of her. She also surrendered her soul. And we see that in verse 46 when it says, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify, doth magnify, magnify the Lord. But she also uh, surrendered her spirit. In verse 47 it says, And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. 
Mary, she got the birth announcement. That Christmas birth announcement that came to, from, from heaven, presented to her by the angel Gabriel. She got it. She took it. But the birth announcement to, of, of Christ wasn't just stopped there. But if we look over in chapter 2, at verse 8 of Luke, um, it says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping their watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were uh, score for afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And there shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one, said one another, Let us now go, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to, unto us. And they came in haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made it known abroad. And then saying which was told them concerning this child, and all they had that heard it wondered at, the, at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glor glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, and as it was told unto them. The birth announcement came to Mary by the, the angel Gabriel. But we see here that this announcement came to the shepherds. But it wasn't just presented by one angel. It says here that, that it was presented by a host, a heavenly host. They came to, to the shepherds because they weren't announcing that the, the Savior was to come. They came to announce the Savior was here. That he had been born. I'm thinking of these, these shepherds and they're out in their field and, and they're, they're, they're watching over their flock and, and protecting them from the elements of, of potential wolves coming in and, and killing their, 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 their flock. And, and in thinking of it, these, these shepherds were probably the ones that were caring for these, these, the lambs that would be normally taken off to sacrifice in the temple. So these shepherds are there, they're, they're watching, and all of a sudden the, this glory, this light shines on them. A heavenly host of lights comes down upon them. And, and I can only imagine they're there, and boom! It's right there. God's message for them, right there in front of them. As you, as you may not know, but shepherds were, were kind of looked down on. They were the outcasts in Israel. They were considered to be unclean because of the type of profession that they had. Nobody was growing up and saying, one day I want to be a shepherd and take care of sheep. So them, they were caring for the flocks and it kept them away from the temple. So they were unable to go and, and, and present them, themselves to be cleaned. But God did not care. Because when you think of it, when you read through, through God's word and as you look at it, you realize that the shepherds were the very first people that God went and told about the Messiah when he, had, when he had arrived. Mary was the first to know that she was going to carry the Son of God. And the angel came to Joseph to tell him the, that he was to continue down this path of, of marrying her and caring for her. But the shepherds were the first to know that the Lord Savior had come into the earth. And I began to think, I was like, wow, that, there's, a, there's a lot to take in. There's a lot to ponder on that. Because in, in, when we look in, in, chap, in John chapter 10, verse 11, Jesus calls himself as, I am the good shepherd. As, as Jesus is walking by and John sees him, John looks up and says, behold, the Lamb of God. And I, and I begin to see the comparison. Jesus Christ was the shepherd that came, but he was also came as the Lamb of God to be the sacrifice, the one and only sacrifice that would take away all sin. We begin to, as I begin to look at that, and I begin to rejoice and thinking, wow. 
God chose these, these, these outcast uh, shepherds to share this birth announcement and to be the very first to tell them that the Messiah had come. And even des- the angel describes to um, the shepherds and tell them how, where they're going to find them and, and where to find them. You know, he's, he, they, 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 he comes in and we see that the angel, and at this point, I, I kind of believe in that this angel here might be Gabriel as well. Because Gabriel comes to Mary and, he, and the very first thing he tells her, fear not. Then we have this angel that comes and he tells the shepherds, fear not. For I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. But then I begin to realize that, that this message, that, that this, this announcement was personalized by God for the shepherds. If you look at uh, in um, chapter, uh, verse 11 of chapter 2, it says, For unto you is born this day. The unto you is a very key thing that, that, that God personalized this birth announcement, this message to the shepherds. But God also personalized it for you as well. For unto you is born this day. It's personal. It's signed. It's autographed by God himself. And they got that and they received it. How did they receive it? They responded immediately with obedience when they heard the good news that the Savior had come. Because what does it say? It says that they, 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 gave, they left their flock and they, and they said, let us go unto Bethlehem. In uh, verse, uh, uh, let's see, 15 it says, And it came to pass, and the angels were gone away from them in heaven, and the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go unto, even unto Bethlehem and see the things that which have come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. They responded immediately because they knew that the Lord had brought this great message to them. That, that he has something great to tell them. And they went to, to search and to seek and to find the baby that, that, that came to save them. Because God personalized the precious gift in the manger for them and for you. I shared with you before that, that Christmas was more about presents to me when I was younger. And as I got older, that I realized that the gift of, of his presence was more important. And why did I grasp that? Because I grasped the understanding that God personalized this precious gift for me. The precious gift that, that's in the manger was brought for me. He died for me. He chose me when I was wicked and filthy and a sinner. I was like those sheep. I was an outcast, unclean, unworthy to be in the presence of the Lord. And he still loved me. But he loves you too. He doesn't just love you. He doesn't just love me. But he loved the world. And we see that in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God in his love for the world gave his Son. And many times we, 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 we reject it. We push that gift away. Or we try to do good things, we try to work for those things. But we see here that the shepherds, they didn't, they didn't try to work for this gift. They didn't try to, 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 to pay for the gift. What did they do? They, in obedience to God, they left their, their, their sheep and their lambs and, and, and went and searched for the newborn king. Because they knew that there was something more about this. Because if it wasn't, they, they would have been, it would have been told to us if it wasn't important. But God saw it very important for us to understand that he, he gave it to the shepherds first. I was talking to a gentleman the other day, or, or I think it was like last week or something. And as we began to talk, I, I 
brought the conversation to more spiritual things and, and presenting the gospel to him to talk about the love of Jesus Christ and the, the meaning for Christmas. In our conversation, he began to share with me that he accepted Christ a, a, a while back. And I asked him, I said, well, can I ask you, do you go to church anywhere? And he shared with me, he said, no, I don't go to church anywhere. And I said, well, well how come? Why, why aren't you in a church? Like, why don't you go and, and fellowship with other believers and sit under God's teaching and, 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 and become a, a disciple of Jesus Christ? And, and he came up with every excuse in the book as to why he could not come to church. His main excuse was because he didn't have a vehicle and he didn't have the transportation to get back and forth to church. And I began to think, wow, the shepherds, they didn't have a vehicle. They didn't have a bus. They didn't have a minivan. They had no transportation. They used their feet and went and searched for the newborn king. And this guy tells me he can't get to church because he doesn't have a vehicle. Do you know what was really sad? Was he lived within a mile radius of a good, solid, Bible-believing church. And it was too much for him to walk a little bit less than a mile to go and be in fellowship and to be under God's teaching. But what did we see? We saw Mary and Joseph be moved by the, by the Holy Spirit to go into Bethlehem and to, and to bring forth the, the newborn king. We see the shepherds left everything behind and went and searched for this king. We know that the, the wise men followed the star and searched for the king. Because it was important to them. They didn't care the miles. They didn't care the distance. All they cared about was a, a relationship with, the, with Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. To accept and receive the precious gift that, that God had sent to them. And my heart was saddened for this guy. As I talked to him and, and I realized that, that, that those in, in, in Scripture and, and, and those that desire to be in fellowship with God will go at, at all lengths that, that possible to be in the house of God, to hear his word and to be encouraged by it. I begin to think of, of missionaries and, and, and churches that are underground because they're in persecution countries willing to die to hear the word of God. And yet sometimes we make excuses why we can't be in the house of God. Sometimes we, we make every excuse and, and write it off as if, if it's the right thing to do because we, we kind of make ourselves feel okay about it. After a while, it's become this thing of where we, we, we wrestle with it and we begin to say, you know what? It's okay. God will forgive me. Well, yes, God does forgive. But the church was established to be an encouragement and to be there for the bottom of believers. And this guy, just, he just didn't understand it. He didn't see it. He was more concerned about the worldly aspects of, of vehicles and, and transportation than he was about having a spiritual relationship with God. Many times we, we do the same thing. Some, many times we miss out. Luke chapter, or chapter 2, verse 16 says, And they came in with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. That word found there means they had a search for it. They knew what they were looking for, but they were still willing to search for it. Many of us know the, 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 the story of the, the lady that lost the two coins in her house, and, and she goes frantically searching for those two coins. Are you searching for God today? Are you searching for God because you, you don't have a personal relationship with Him? Are you searching for God because you've lost your way, because you have allowed the, the hustle and the bustle and the busyness of Christmas to get into the way of everything? The shopping, the decorating, the baking, the, the, the family coming in, it's all gotten all in the way. And before you know it, Christmas Day comes and we sit back and we say, wow, this month has gone by and I haven't even worshipped the Lord and Savior. I haven't praised Him for what He has done in my life. One thing I, 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 I love to do, and I share with you guys, that Christmas time, I love to listen to Christmas music, but sometimes when I'm driving in the car, I'll just automatically turn it on. And I will sing to, the, to, to my voice as loud as I can, worshiping God. Mary, did you know that your, that your baby was born to save us? 
Angels we have heard on high. And I, and I rejoice as I, as I take in those, those, those lyrics and I praise God with my voice with them for what he has done. Because I don't make it a, a, a just a one at a time, once a month, one month of the whole year. I make it an all year round praising God for his, his love for me. The love that he saw when he, when he created me, the love that he knew that where I was going to be, he still loved me. And I praise and I worship him through, through those actions and those songs. We shouldn't miss the birth announcement of Jesus Christ because we allow the, the everyday life of routines to get in our way. We shouldn't allow the, the birth announcement of Jesus Christ stop us from coming and worshiping him. But sometimes it's like we shared at the beginning, sometimes we feel like we've been abandoned. Sometimes we feel like God doesn't hear us. God's not listening. God, in his love for us, shared with Mary and he shared with the shepherds that he sent a precious gift to save us from eternal hell and eternal separation from Jesus Christ. As I was thinking about... If Jesus was never born, and, and, and I know that we, when we read Scripture, we know that God cannot lie, He won't lie, and He does not lie. But what happens if God never put in, into Scripture that the Messiah was coming? What if God finally just, between the Old Testament and the New Testament, said, and threw His hands up and said, I'm just going to let them fend from themselves. I'm not going to send a Messiah to them. I'm not going to send someone to save them. I'm going to see how they can live and, and do on their own. As you see, the manger is set up here. What happens if this was never happened? Where would your life be today? Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross for a pointless reason. He died because he took on your sins. Mary got it because she, she understood that she was a sinner. That she wasn't, the only importance that she had was that God saw favor to allow her to become the, the, the son of the Messiah. But she knew she was a sinner. Joseph knew he was a sinner. The wise men, the shepherds knew that they were sinners. But in obedience, they, they followed God's calling. They surrendered. We see at the end, of, um, in verse 20, it says, And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God and all things that had heard and seen, and it was told unto them. They went away rejoicing. When's the last time you went away rejoicing in what God has done in your life that you could not contain it and you needed to share? That it was overflowing. This week, I, I had an opportunity to speak with, with a gentleman, and I... And I Begin to talk to him about the gospel. I begin to share with him, it's not about your, your works that you're telling me. It's not about being a good person. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ and believing by faith that he died on the cross for you. This, is, this time of season is about understanding that God sent us a, a Christmas birth announcement. A joyous, a, a great joyful no news that a Savior had come. That he hadn't abandoned them. He hadn't left them. That he was still with them. And even the, as the shepherds went away, they told those around them. I can only imagine the rejoicing that took place when they left and they went back to those that were still keeping the watch over the flock and protecting them as they proceeded to tell them that they had found the newborn king. Do you remember when, when, when the Lord got a hold of your life and you surrendered the joy you had? Where's that joy now? Find it. Find it this Christmas season and kindle it and bring the fire back to go out and tell somebody about Jesus Christ and what he's done. Because those people that don't have Christ and don't understand this, this, why we celebrate his birth are separated from an all-loving God. And they're on the pathway that's taking them straight to hell. And that's a hard concept to grasp. And many times we avoid the conversation or we try to avoid the truth that hell is a real place. But 
they need to know about God's love for them. They need to know that Jesus Christ died for them. So are, are you, re, did, have you received that good news? Are, are, maybe you're here today and you've received that good news, but you've allowed the, today's busyness to, to overshadow the true meaning of Christmas. Maybe you're here today and, and you realize like, that you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The Christmas season to you is just about, about Christmas and, and everything else that comes along with it, not a spiritual side of it. I pray that you guys search your hearts and you look and say, God, where am I at today? With every, every head bowed and every eye closed as we, as we stand to our feet. God sent us a great message. God in his love sent us a gift. He sent us the, the biggest birth announcement of Jesus Christ that anyone could ever have. The multitude of angels came from heaven to rejoice and praise and sing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. God looked at these shepherds and didn't just see that they were unclean and unfit to come to the temple. He saw them as, as worthy men to be able to know that, that the Son of God has come into the, in the world. And he came to them first and he shared that with them. Maybe you're here today and God's been trying to get a hold of your heart and to share with you his love, his passion for you. And maybe you're holding on to that, that anger, that bitterness, that sin that just won't let you go because, because you are indulging it. But I beg of you and pray for you today that, you, that today you will just give it up. Lay it here at the altar. Give it to God. Worship Him. Praise Him. Maybe you're here today and, and you've lost way with your way with God. You've allowed the, the worldly things in your life to take heed and, and to, to wrap you up and, and, you're, and you're missing out on the, the true joys of what Christmas is all about. I pray that you'll come here, re present them to the altar, give them up to God, and ask Him to, to, to take care of those things. Father, we, we praise you for who you are. We thank you for this time that we can rejoice in your Son. Father, I ask that you be with us today and, and through this Christmas season, I pray that we will rejoice with our families. And even if those that may not know you as their personal Savior, Father, that we will be able to have that opportunity to present the gospel to them, Father, that they may know you as their personal Savior. And we ask this all in your son's precious name. Amen. Mm -hmm.